Can we sing him in Hangano, triple three, to God be the glory, 191. Ehangano, triple three, to God be the glory, 191. Jesus Christ, we are here this afternoon, first and foremost, to give thanks to our Heavenly Father, who have granted us this opportunity to come before Him. Secondly, we are here to mourn and to celebrate the life of a husband, a father, a brother, and a fellow believer whom the Lord has called from this fleeting life. Let us therefore humble ourselves before the Almighty and start this service in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Merciful Father, the generation rise and pass away before you. You are the strength of those who labor and the rest of the blessed dead. 
We give you thanks for the life and memories of our dear father, husband, brother, and fellow believer, Johannes Usikwa Shipala, whom you have called from this fleeting life. Almighty and most merciful God, in his death, you have reminded us once again that in this life, we do not have a permanent city. Teach us, therefore, to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Give us grace to live by faith in your dear Son, Jesus Christ, to seek him while we have time and to do his will, so that when he, the great shepherd of the flock, appears, we also may appear with him in glory. To your fatherly goodness and comfort, we commend those whom you have afflicted by this death, especially the widow, Meme Hilma, the children, family, this congregation, friends, and all who mourn the departure of our dear and treasured brother. Let the pain of our bereavement be softened by the assurances and consolation of your holy word. Let the death of our dear beloved and cherished Johnny Ashipala serve to direct our hearts heavenward, that we may seek those things which are above where Christ is seated. You are the father of the fatherless, and in this hour be the helper and comforter of those who are in sorrow. May we not sorrow and mourn as people who have no hope, O oh Father, but teach us all to watch and pray because we do not know the hour or the day we will be called from this life. Keep us by your spirit so that we may not be ensnared by the vanities of this time, but to finish well our course and pass from death to life everlasting through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Let us hear together the first scripture reading as it is recorded in Psalm 90, Psalm 90, verse 1 up to 6. A prayer of Moses, the man of God. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting you are God. You turn men back to dust, saying, Return to dust, O sons of men. For a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. You sweep men away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. Thou in the morning it springs up new, by evening it is dry and withered. Thus far the word of God. Please be seated. Good afternoon, fellow mourners. Pastor, thank you very much for the opening prayer. My name is Tilenge Andima. I will be coordinating the program together with my co-director, Mimi Olivia. Uh, looking at our program, it's, it looks short and sweet. We have got eight items on the program. The ninth one is the sermon. That one the pastor will decide on the time he will take to conduct the sermon. But if everybody, every speaker that is being called upon here speaks for about eight minutes, we should be able to conclude this program within an hour, apart from the sermon. So I'm urging those that are coming to deliver messages to do it within eight minutes or within eight minutes or less than that. I therefore wish, wish to give my co-director the opportunity to come and announce the next speakers as we move on. Olivia, please. Good 
Good afternoon, fellow mourners and the Biri family. The following on our program, we're going to give the opportunity to the veterans, Master Carlos Ndadi, retired general. Thank you very much. Um, uh, usually, uh, it's uh, that because we uh, we are cut a bit short to this, uh, I would like to request uh, two minutes of my time. If uh, any of our colleagues as combatants to to sing uh, one of the the liberation song, two verses only, if that can be allowed. Tate uh, Boni, if you, you could lead uh, with uh, Ndamonova Kwaita Tavalu. Thank you, thank you very much. Dear uh, Director of Ceremony, the widow, Ms. Ilma, the children, the brave family, comrades, and dear mourners. I, I'm, I understand I was only given eight minutes Usually, uh, when you speak, the contribution made by a veteran, a combatant, during the liberation struggle and the plan, we have lots of uh, stories to tell. I am Carlos Ndadi, as it's on the program, and I'm only here with that specific um, page to relate the involvement of that journey during the liberation struggle as a combatant. Although I'm told to be very short, I have 27 pages, but I will, I'll cut them to, 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 to three. That, that I will, I'll comply. Dear Monas, it, it, it's always uh, honored for a combatant like me to stand with you to celebrate and mourn the life of that journey. I wish to relate some little um, stories that relate the, 
the involvement of uh, Tate Joni during the liberation struggle as a combatant of plan. In mid-1978, after the Kasanga, Kasinga massacre, John Ashpala, together with other comrades like Kenamua Hambire, Aino Yakalola, Rifa Sadoze Ileka, and the comrade Pamo formed part of the 1978 intakes for basic military training at Tobias Hanyako Training Center near Lubango. And they were trained as uh, an 82 motor operators, which lasted for about six months to a year. After finished with this basic training, the group went on an upgrading courses with the internationalist forces of the Cuban forces near Humbe, a town south of Lubango, where Johnny was upgraded to an anti-air defense operator and a crew commander. The rest of his colleagues went on different careers. After these upgrades, late in 1979 to early 1980, Johnny got deployed into the forces around the operational commanding headquarters of PLAN in the areas of Chiteketa, Kwando, and the Mbabi forests where Tate Johnny formed part of the core officers of the Plan Operational Commanding Headquarters, served as the head of administration in the office of the Anti-Air Defense Department, headed by Mr. Andrew Ndaba, combat name Bongi. John, since he was the senior admin office of the anti-air defense, his responsibility, amongst others, was to deploy of anti-air defense personnel in various units within planned forces and it is structures, so as arrange for their training rehearsal, and comply a strictly monthly report of the department. Johnny Ashpala has been discharging his duties reservantly throughout our stay at the Operation Command Headquarters in different areas of deployment. Even though Johnny Aspala was assigned to anti-air defense office. He has been always ready to carry out different assignments. I recall in December 20th, 1982, he was tasked to head a military convoy as it is commander that was meant to escort and deliver the plan chief of political commissar at that time, Dali Che Kamati, and other general staff of Operational Command Headquarters, including Augustus Ngham Makinamara, who was plan chief of, chief of signals and communications, a department of the commanding structure of uh, Operational Command Headquarters of Plan, where I served as an administrator. Sadly, this convoy, commanded by John, fell in an ambush by the Unita bandits, and Comet McNamara died on the spot of short wounds. 
His driver was severely wounded. Since my vehicle I was driving, which was head front vehicle of the convoy, was totally destroyed, General Spala, in his capacity as a convoy commander, ordered me to take over driving of the Land Cruiser, of the Land Rover, pardon me, of the Chief of Communications, that Mark Namara, who died, drive his body to Lubango. John was part of the convoy, not only as the convoy commander, but he was on his way out to Eastern Europe for further office training upgrades. And I was on my way to Northwestern front, meant to deliver the destroyed land cruiser and the other office duties. It was since then I got wounded by the landmine explosion in 1984 and went to hospital at Czech Republic for eight months. That only came to meet with him here in Namibia during the United Nations led 435 elections. Thereafter, we continue in touch as business leaders and the commercial lease firms where John and I, we sell feeding grasses, firewood, wood products, and vegetable that he grows. It is indeed worth to mention here that all of, all, of, all of us here, whether the widow or the children and the entire breed family, we have lost an asset that was worth keeping until old marriage. May his soul rest in eternal peace. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, dear Monas. I just wanted to give an information um, that uh, for those uh, that need uh, bathrooms, if you go through the door on my right here, just far behind the church building, there will be our bathrooms on the other side. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the program, uh, we call on Master Ezio Veneti, the business partner. My dear friend and brother Johnny, this might be a farewell and a Godspeed from us all, but I assure you that forever you will live on to be remembered and cherished in our hearts and in our memories. May Hilma, may Selma, O Papa, Etupe, and the siblings, the Ashipala family, Kankondi and Asino, on behalf of my wife, Jennifer, my three sons, my co-director and friend, Anita, and all of Johnny's dozens of business colleagues and friends, our profound and most sincere condolences, our hearts and prayers go out to you and go out to Johnny's soul. I never imagined standing here today 
and speaking of Johnny in the past tense. I've lost a friend and I've lost a true brother. I've had the great privilege to share over the last 15 years with this truly honorable man, unforgettable work experiences of joy, of despair, of hope, of laughter, and above all, of true camaraderie. And this with never one single moment of disagreement or tension. Ours was the best possible work and friendship relation any person could hope for. And this was only made possible by Johnny's truly unique and generous character and profound wisdom. Together, we founded our company, Natura Energy, and together, we dreamed up the Arandas Power Project and the TerraSun Energy Solar Project, which both could have tremendous positive impact on the Namibian economy. Johnny was not in business for the pursuit of riches and power. Yes, money would be welcome, but his dream was much greater than money. His dream was, be, was to be successful so that he could help others. His desire was not only to help his immediate family, like any good father would do, but also to help those in need who have been forgotten, to help the many who have been left behind in this Namibian society, the very same Namibian society to which he gave his youth, his freedom, and selfless sacrifice. Forever mindful of poverty and hardships he experienced early in his childhood, Johnny dreamed of building a school for the poverty-stricken children in the rural areas. He dreamed of helping his Lubango dungeon comrades, accused and abandoned by the system. He dreamed of doing good and making a difference. Never once did I hear him speak of a dream car with fat tires or big exhausts like so many do around us. Johnny sincerely cared about us all. And because Johnny truly cared, people truly loved him. I had the privilege to travel thousands of miles with Johnny, both here in Namibia and abroad. In Namibia, on the road to Walfish Bay, Luderitz, or Oshakati, I used to call him Ashipala Airways. Cruising on the roads at a cool 140 kilometers an hour, nothing seemed to bother this tarmac fighter pilot. With a steady hand, chilled music, always recounting some fascinating story about his past or sharing with me some astute political or economic analysis about the future. I actually loved those road trips with Johnny. I'm so grateful that I spent those precious hours in his company. And I will miss those moments very much. Those road trips showed me that Johnny would have made a great president, by the way. Certainly better than many presidents that I've met in my life. I tried to convince him to go into politics, but he always turned that idea down. Everywhere we met, we went, without any exception whatsoever. Johnny would be stopped by somebody who would call out, Hey, Tata Joe, this happened to me when I was with him in Nigeria, in Barcelona, in New York, in Istanbul, in Lesotho, in Joburg or Cape Town. Everybody knew Johnny. And if it was not for this crazy COVID year, we would have here today in this church 5,000, not 50. Professionally, I had a long and great respect for Johnny. He never had the opportunity to finish school or go to university, but Johnny was an incredibly fast learner, a very attentive listener, and he, more than many others, 
truly deserves the honor honoris causa doctorate of business administration. More than many others who completed university, Johnny had an excellent grasp of the energy business that we are in, understood perfectly the ins and outs of project finance, and was a most valuable colleague in our strategic discussions. I will miss him, and we will miss him dearly. To say that I miss him does not even begin to explain the pain I felt. When Ms. Elma phoned me on that terrible Friday, Johnny sacrificed his youth for his country. He sacrificed his health for his professional dreams. Johnny was taken away from us, amongst others, also by many years of suffering and justice, so many years of enduring stress, and by sleepless nights. Unfair, unfair professional treatment robbed Johnny of his life and robbed us all of Johnny. Nothing can bring him back, but his legacy does not need to perish. The pain that we all feel, in the pain that we all feel, I wish to find the strength and the hope in the dreams and the goals that Johnny and I set out to achieve with our partners and with the contribution of many others that cannot be here today. I wish to complete what we set out to do. I want us to be successful for Johnny. I want us to build his dream school. He will want that, he deserves that, and we will give that to him. Johnny's warm laughter, boundless generosity, profound wisdom, true friendship, sincere kindness, and constant fairness, and the unwavering faithfulness will be in our hearts and souls forever. We love you, Johnny. We miss you. And may your soul rest in peace, and may God bless your beloved ones. Amen. May we sing together in Ehangano, Materegatano Longo Nahamano, Ehangano, to God be the glory 144, Ehangano, Materegatano Longo Nahamano, to God be the glory 144, Opene Dulamana Lapua.
give the opportunity uh, to friends, Master Kakune Kanjavera and Master Michael Kadikwa. Dear mourners and bereaved family, the unbearable pain of losing a best friend, a brother, a comrade of over 40 years is like being at the sea without a life jacket. When I went to Wolfie's Bay for the first time with the late Aaron Mushimba, Otika Kunga, and Jake Saibondi. You, Johnny, hosted us at your parents' house. By then, we were still young and militant. Later, we left the country together to fight for freedom and independence. During the most trying times of the Lubango Dungeons, we shared one pace, space for the duration of our stay there. You cared about everyone. You never displayed ill feelings, making jokes as usual, and you were often the voice of the reason. You made me a part of the Ashipala family, the best man at your wedding to your beautiful wife, Meme Hilma. This is a bond I will always cherish. You, Johnny, excelled in everything you did. A family man and a devoted Christian, an outstanding chess player, an exceptional entrepreneur with strong business acumen, one of the best drivers I ever met a very good dancer. Johnny was a committed, hardworking, full of energy individual with unbreakable perseverance. A humble man with a sense of humor, very passionate with what he did. Your impatience was legendary so was your disinterest in sport, especially in football. One evening, we went to the same New Human Stadium to watch a game between Blue Water and African Stars. After the game, on our way home, Johnny asked me, Wie het gewen? Nogal van a man van Walvis. Your ideals will have been fully realized but your dedication and passion were unquestionable. Go well from your best friend. Mr. Michael Kadikwa. May we sing from Ehangano 404, Ehangano 404.
We are now going to listen to the children message from Mambata, Demweda, and Etupe. Good afternoon. First of all, I'm going to start with the message from our little sister Etupe to my father, dear dad. I'm going to really, really miss you, daddy. I will miss your hugs, kisses, and high fives. In reality, that you will not get to see me graduate, see me walk down the aisle on my wedding day, when I get a driver's license, own my first car, dead, you are a great father, husband, brother, and a friend to so many people. He always knew how to put a smile on your face I will really miss the times we dance together, the times we bright together, the times I annoyed you, the times you made me laugh, and the times you caught me stealing one of your shirts. I will forever remember your stories you told me when you were a child. My dad was a person who loved his family and friends. My dad loved to help others. My dad will truly be missed by everyone, but he is now in a better place, up in heaven. May my father's soul rest in eternal peace. Etupe Ashipala. My name is Lucas Ashipala. Lucas Ambata Maharero Ashipala. And my twin brother's name is Lazarus Ndemweda Mandume Ashipala. And I will be doing the speech for our father together. Our earliest memory of us with our father started when we were four years old. The earliest we could remember was when Mama had to go to Europe, and we had to go live with Tate Kriya and Shiagaya in Oshite, in Onganjera. Father would often drive to Oshite to come and see us, and he, he has always been very supportive, and he has always been there for us. Father has so much love for us, even though he was a very, 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 very difficult man to understand. And we got to really understand why after the different speeches that we heard about him when he was in exile. He would always preach to me to consider going into crop farming instead of being a chef. But we never got down time to really sit down and talk about it. Father had unconditional love for his granddaughter, Shiwa Abigail Nambashu Ashipala, and he even named her after his mother, the traditional name Nambashu. He would often make time to drive to the north just to go visit his grand granddaughter. He was there for our brother, Ndemweda, when he lost his daughter, the late Normani Ashipala, and he offered so much support 
and always preached a lot to me about love, love, and love. He was an advocate for love, and that was the special thing about him. There is a phrase that he always mentioned that says, if you love something, you will always be patient enough to learn to understand that something. For example, relationships, kids, friends, or even crops that you've planted and they are not growing the way you plant them to grow. Father loved crop farming and was always willing to share his skills and pass them on. He has always been there. We would often check up on each other via SMSs, sending each other Bible verses, or even motivational quotes. The last time we met was about two months ago. He was perfectly fine. He came to see me at my pizza business that I've recently opened. And he only came there to preach to me about love, responsibility, and loyalty to God. And that is something that I will live with forever. Rest in peace, Father. We will always carry you in our hearts. May we now sing from Ehangano the first verse, uh, 331, Ehangano, to God be the glory, 104, the first verse. Ehangano, 331, to God be the glory, 104. Now giving the opportunity uh, for the message from the siblings from Master Gepard Ashipala. Anoto na teni, shoka kamu sisi, sekundyo ka omawe ni tia. Ote angom fu dingo azike wulu, oso anoto to na teni. The director of the proceedings, Pastor Mbaduvara, the councils of Inner City, their mourners, the widow, and all those who were touched by Usiku's death. <clears throat> it is with great sadness that I stand before you this evening 
to make this speech on behalf of my siblings and I. For our beloved brother, Johnny Usiku Ashipala. I ask my creator to give me the strength to make these few difficult remarks. I say difficult because it has only been three years since I stood here in this very same position, also speaking on behalf of my siblings at the memorial service of our dear departed elder sister, May Magano. The year 2020 will go down in history. It's a year that was very difficult for many of us. And our family is no exception. Nevertheless, despite the pain in our hearts, we thank the Almighty for having blessed our parents with a son like Johnny. Growing up in Wolfis Bay, our father always preferred to call us by our Oshuambo names. Johnny's was Usiko. One time in Wolfis Bay, there was a modeling competition, also known as a stop competition. And John decided to register himself under the name of Johnny Knight. And so he became known as Johnny Knight. As a child, he mostly hung up with, with uh, people that were older than him. Johnny had a very inquisitive mind. He was incredibly fascinated by the Atlantic Ocean and always used to imagine building a ship and taking the family overseas. To be free from apartheid, our brother disliked injustice. Johnny was easily bored by the sitting idle and doing nothing. As a child, he liked cars and learned how to drive at a very early age. One Sunday afternoon in Quisep Mount, Wolfis Bay, in the early 70s, we just saw two police vans chasing a car with a window registration number plate. It seems like a car racing competition in the location. Now, one thing you must understand is this. During the colonial time, police vans were not welcome in Quisepmont because it only means one thing. Someone was about to get arrested. Without clearly knowing who was driving this racing car, the community was cheering it on as it totally outpaced the police van. This went on a while for a while until the police called for reinforcement. And that is how they finally caught up. Little did we know the mad driver was Johnny. Johnny had taken Angel and Paul or Sisingi's car who were visiting in Wolfie's Bay without permission. We could recognize him sooner because he was a small, that it looked as if the car was driving itself. The rest is history. He surely didn't learn this lesson that day. Anyone who truly knows jo Johnny knows that whatever there was a family gathering, Johnny was in charge of the bride, something he likes dearly. During the last year, Johnny often invited a small group of friends and family over to enjoy a braai. Our brother loved bringing people together. He liked good food and he liked to entertain. He loved, he liked, he loved music. Johnny was happiest when others were happy. He loved family. For Johnny, family was everything. As you are all surely aware, Johnny was a business genius. He was full of sound business ideas and disliked greed. For over 10 years, 
Johnny and his business partner Ezio pursued around this power energy project. They were confronted by, with challenges after challenges. And although Johnny was mentally and physically exhausted, he never gave up hope. Our brother was tenacious. Johnny had several business pursuits again, as I mentioned before. Our brother did not like sitting idle. Johnny had several eggs in his basket and also pursued commercial farming at which he did an excellent job. Who, know, who, will, who now will deliver farm fresh butternuts and watermelons to us? Oh dear brother, your presence will be surely missed. As much as we mourn the passing of Johnny, we are also incredibly thankful to the Almighty for his life. Johnny was courageous and dedicated a part of his life to the liberation of our country as a freedom fighter. Unlike Johnny, many of our brothers and sisters did not make it back home to celebrate the independence of our motherland. Our oldest brother, Lazarus Karasa, being one of them. Although we are heartbroken, we are grateful that Johnny return and spend memorable years with us, and those are memories we will forever cherish. We unconditionally supported John in every way we could and did so with open hearts. Because that is how we were brought up by our parents, to always help one another. And that we did even until his last breath. Dear Johnny, we struggle to cope with your sudden departure. It is very painful. It is so sad that your life had to end in such a way and so hard to accept that you will be no longer be with us. Lord, teach us to accept the things we cannot change. We take solace in that fact that Johnny is with his Almighty. Your siblings, will always love you unconditionally. We shall miss your candid advice and your family will remain part of us. We know that you were going through. You fought a good fight. Now it is time for you to go and rest, dear brother, till we meet again in the kingdom of the Lord. Lastly, Johnny always used to hum the song Kapena Onjira Kainoju. That's 43 and a hangano. And I will ask Tateo Fiku to, to lead us in that song. May his soul rest in perfect peace. I thank you. I now call upon Tutaleni Asino to read the message of condolences received. Tutaleni.
Good afternoon, dear congregation. I am going to read uh, two messages that were uh, sent. The first one is from the office of the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of International Relations and Cooperation. It is dated on the 21st of December, 2020. It is addressed to High Commissioner Selma Shipala Musavi, Ministry of International Relations, Cooperation, Vinduk. Dear High Commissioner and family, it is with deep shock and disbelief that we have learned of the sudden death of your beloved brother, Mr. Johannes Usiku Ashipala, who passed away on Friday, 21st December 2020. On behalf of the Deputy Minister, Special Advisor, Management, and the entire staff of the Ministry, and indeed on my own behalf, I wish to extend our heartfelt condolences and deepest sympathy to you and the entire bereaved family for the sad loss of your loved, of your beloved brother. We wish you strength during this difficult time. Quote, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And it is taken from Joshua 1 verse 9. May his soul rest in eternal peace. Signed, Netumbo Nandi Dwaido, Member of Parliament, Deputy Prime Minister, and Minister. The second message comes from the Nakamela family. Dear our Papa and siblings, the entire bereaved family, relatives and friends, Mekulu, Diku and myself had learned about the sudden passing away of Tate Johnny, which has come like a touch on the raw. We feel deeply twisted into a mood of sorrow. It is evident and well known to us that the loss of a loved one is a scorching reality which is unpleasant but painful when faced. Therefore, trust and hope in the living God is paramount. The present circumstances which Michael, Diku and myself find ourselves in does not allow us to be with you physically, to attend Johnny's memorial and funeral services. We pain, we question, we mourn, and we are grieving. I can't read Afrikaans, so I'm gonna mess this one up. Shows di tia hier behag. And similarly, do consent together with you that indeed God does not need any assistance whatsoever when he spares off. We rely on his perfect grace, which is sufficient for us in our sorrow, because God, who set Johnny apart from birth and called him by his grace, was pleased. Who are we then not to accept and comply? So we humble ourselves and hear what the Lord says to us, namely, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weeping. Therefore, my dear family, we will feel the consolation all the more gladly about our sadness so that Christ's power may rest on us. Peace, perfect peace, Hymn 169 from To God Be the Glory is the hymn that the Nakamela family would like us to sing. And again, that is hymn 169 from To God Be the Glory, Peace, Perfect Peace.
May we sing together a hangano 411 to God be the glory 138. A hangano 411 to God be the glory 138. Fellow mourners, you realize that um, on the program, there is no slot for messages, tributes, only those that are on. So we allowed, using our authority, we allowed the two messages that were read last. In part because there are a number of messages coming from High Commission and Ambassadors, 
And the head of the ministry has spoken, so we think that we are referring these messages to the family at home. And including a message by Oiva, writing on behalf of uh, ex detainees of Swapo. We are also referring that message to be read at home. We are now followed with uh, the widow's message that is coming. We are getting it from Ms. Olivia Hamquire, my co director. Yes. Meme etuole otatum bulangei ongom salomi eserena mirongon datu nongoi kalunga okwatse aihe omwa ongo etokona konanje no watse anje watse anje u nanda kutumba nongere ndafikama omadira diro ganje agehe otogatsea mangaina gaholoka omadira diro goe kalunga Ojete gatsea. Ongo ogenjita ga nyengana okuyalurwa. Meme tuhole otatsikire kotati. Ongo mpsalomi ethereri mweno mirongo mbalina imwe. Ekwatho janje otari zipeni. Ekwatho janje otari zikomwa. Omshitiwe uru nevi. Omwa otato na terenje. Oe eshigo negameno janje. Otandi he kumuna, otandi liri omholike wanje. Tandi liri tate joni wanje, omholike wanje ayakuluwa poko mwawe. Ondari ndayambe kwa moku takane na nomholike wanje pethimbo juu gunju kalela. Momvo eo virimwe omaserongoi nomirongongoi na imwe. Otwaya puriru wa monjo kana omasiku shogari onlongo gayuri. Omvura eo virimu matherongo ino mirongongo inandatu. Megonga lo moka hao. Momvo eo virimu mirongongo ino matherongo ino mirongongo inane. Otwaya mbekwa no mati wetu woshiri. Lomaya Simon Tukwatha. Ngu etu tetekela naremu kwa aruhe. Momvo mayo vigeri gari. Omo nyo gomati wetu na gutsikire no kuvururu kwa nombiri. Omo holike wanje okwari ya ambe kwa no luvaloro wa no na yatano. A matiane no kakado na kamwe. Oma dinaga o o sheri o puna. A kwa na ambata Lucas nde muweza Lazarus. Lomaya Simon tukwatha no kakado na etupe Victoria Vanessa Kawana. Tate joni wetu omtugu kwacha ita upewa thana, uu kwacha wapumba. Om na nkondoni ilonga, om na njungu, talongo, talongerele. Tayakula keke umwe. Tate joni tetu yakula tukeno mbili meumbo, amwaina, okume, na ehe mboka tapumbwa ekwathoje. Otandi pandula tate karunga apene njo mhorike wanje, Oma ukwa cha tagarandura Omna hole Omna mbili Keolu uinai Omtereki zingi Meumbo jetu Meumbo jetu tate joni Oe akala Omronge kizi Omganji maele Nomsiri shimpuyu uini maike Tate joni Okwari ayambe kwa Nunongo Nonseyo ini maike Yo meumbo Omhorike wanje, okwari omkwathi omwanawa. Se otuwa mwono ya mbeko, jatate kalunga megumbo jetu, moku kalana tate joni, mongkala mwenyo etu. Ondiche we shike, tate kalunga ongwewe tupere tate joni, ongwewe muithana momuyu nimbuka. Eharo joe narigwanithwe. Omwenyo gomhorike wanje, na guvulu kwe nombidi ya aluhe. Translation. Meme Etuhole would like to quote Psalm 139. God is all knowing, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know me when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. 
You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Meme Tuhole continues to say according to Psalm 121, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. I'm crying for Tate Johnny, my dear husband, whom God has taken. I was blessed to meet my dear John at a tender age in 1991. We enter into holy matrimony on the 10th July 1993 in the Okahao Parish. In 1994, we were blessed with our firstborn, Lomaya Simon Tukwatha, who went back to the Lord in 2000. May the soul of our dearest son continue resting in peace. My husband was blessed with five children, four sons and one daughter. Puna, Ambata Lucas, Demogweda Lazarus, Lomaya Simon Tukwatha, and Etupe Victoria Vanessa Kahawana. That the Johnny's unique personality was one you encounter once in a lifetime. Diligent with his work, he was a kind man who was always willing to lend a hand to those in need. That the journey gave and gave freely to everyone in our home. He gave to our household, to his siblings, his nieces and nephews, his friends, and to any who need his help. I want to thank God for giving me that the journey a man who was loving, peaceful, a man who didn't like and avoid nonsense. That the journey loved his friends and he was the best chef in our house. In our home, that the journey was always so well organized, an excellent administrator, and good, take, good caretaker of all things that are happening in our house. That the journey was a good innovator, a talented husband who always knew very well what his household needs. My dear husband was a good provider. We were truly blessed to have that the journey in our home and in our lives. Our time together was blessed. What more can I say? God the Father, you are the one who gave us that journey, and you are the one who called him out of this world. May your will be done. May the soul of my darling husband, that the journey rest in eternal peace. Uh, may we sing um, out of Ehangano 298. And to God be the glory, 136. Ehangano, 298. To God be the glory, 136.
The next item is a urology that you are going to get from Tate Tommy Ukunde. Mr. Ukunde, please. of ceremonies, family, children, widows, dear mourners. My name is Tommy Ukunde. I'm standing here to give you the apology of that uh, Johnny Usiku Ashipala. Family three. Johnny was born on the 22nd of November, 1955. His parents were Tate Lucas Ambata Ashipala and Meme Victoria Nambashu Gepat. Tate Lucas was the son of the Yakopina Nelumbu and he was on Kwambashu by clan. His mother was Meme Victoria Gepat, the daughter of Gepat Nanjule and Hilma Shenguti Shamshimba Wakandenge. Shenguti Shamshimba Wakandenge was the aunt of the father of the founding president. His mother, Meme Victoria, was on Kwanija by clan. Meme Victoria died on the 2nd July, 1974, while Tate Lucas died on the 11th January, 1993. Johnny was the fourth of the six siblings, namely, Magano Loide, Ambondo Ana, Karasande Mweda, Johnny Usiku, Ndeapo Selma, and Oupapa Gepat. In that order, the first and the third born preceded him and are resting with their parents. His childhood. Johnny was born in Walfish Bay and went to school at now Rater's Combined School. There was never a dull moment whenever Johnny was at home because he was a handful growing up. After dinner at home, the family will always continue to sit around the table and listen to stories of how everyone's day went. Johnny will always have a story to tell, which will make everybody to roll in love. Sometimes one had to take his story with a bucket of salt. When you challenge his stories, he will always laugh. He was, good, he was a very good storyteller. As a child, he was naughty, but very friendly and very caring. School was not his strongest cup of tea. Johnny was born a businessman, a very smart businessman. At the age of 11, Johnny started his own business. He told his father at that young age that he was starting a business. The father encouraged him, hoping that he will lose interest and concentrate on his schooling. But Johnny was seriously with his intention. 
Before long, Johnny was the first and only learner who was cycling to school while the rest were walking. How did he do it? He sold oranges and sausages at school and at soccer field on Sunday. I'll revert to this. Youth, Johnny started losing interest in school and concentrated on his business, which was growing. Our parents decided to send him to horse boarding school to revitalize his interest in school. When he came back for vacation, he was as thin as a rail. Our mother will have none of it. She was concerned that her son was starving. On the other hand, the father was convinced it was a training ground for tough manhood. It was not too long before Johnny was back home, working and actively involved in SWAPO. Political activism. From the early 70s up to 1978, when he left into exile, Johnny was a SWAPO activist. He recruited many people, including his sister, Selma, into SWAPO while she was a student in Ongodiva. You have already heard from his comrade about his activism in SWAPO. Many planned combatants slept and ate at Ashipala's house in Walford Bay. All of them brought there by John. There are many planned combatants who were recruited and issued with SWAPO membership card by John going abroad and life in play. When it became unsafe for Johnny to remain in the country, he left for exile in 1978. He was initially trained as an artillerist, 82 millimeter mortar, before joining the Commissariat of the People's Liberation Army of Namibia plane. Every time, every time Johnny narrated the fierce battle they fought. One felt so proud of the former planned combatants. Johnny loved and respected his fellow plane combatants. He was so proud of plane combatants, especially the commanders. He was fascinated by their bravery. Every time Johnny traveled, he carried out with him the photos of Peter Nanyemba, Pondo, Magnamara, and Manfred Baby, Iomba. Life in dangers. Granted, every struggle for national liberation has its own darkest chapter. The same applied to Swapo. In 1985, while returning from training in Bulgaria, he was arrested and sent to Lubango. To the Dangos. We thank God that he survived. He returned back home in 1989, a broken man. Nevertheless, the family accepted him with open arms and showered him with unconditional love, which helped him to recover somehow. The scar was too deep. He accepted what has happened, but vow never forget. He always showered concern about the fellow Pangas, Omapanga, as they call themselves. All Johnny wanted was for someone to take responsibility for what happened, so that he and his comrade can heal. Finding happiness. Johnny found love and married the love of his life, Hilma Etuhore Kangondi, on the 10th July 1993 at Oshitai in Ongajera. They were blessed with five children, twin boys, Ambata and Demweda Ashipala, Pena, Alomaya, 
and Etupe Ashipala. Unfortunately, Lomaya died at the age of six on the 6th November 2000. The death of Lomaya affected him very much, but his Christian faith kept him strong. He was also blessed with one granddaughter, Nambashu, named after the mother of Lay John. Business ventures at home. Johnny had a love for business, but he did not have love for money. Johnny's love for business was to help people. He had a lot for business ideas, which were always supported by others. For every business idea he had, a group of people whom he wanted to benefit. Johnny took joy and gratification by helping people. Living in faith. Johnny had a strong faith that kept him going. He believed that the good Lord will answer his prayers. He never lost hope until his last day on this earth. May his soul rest in perfect peace. I thank you. That was John. We're now going to sing the beloved song of the late. Um, to God be the glory, 104, where he may lead me, I will go. 104, to God be the glory. While we sing, we're going to prepare a video message from Tanya Tates and her kids from the Embassy of Berlin in Germany. Our apologies. We have learned that uh, the lady had children, brothers, and grandchildren. So, before the video, can we just see them? Can we just have them in front and the video can then follow?
May we sing 295 in Hangano? The, lead, the song before the sermon, 295 in Hangano. Um, is the video ready before we sing the sermon lead song? We praise you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. And your grace. Father God, Father God, we ask you, we ask you to be with the Ashipala family. To be with the Ashipala family tomorrow, tomorrow and, on and on Wednesday, where they will lay, they will lay their loved one, their loved one to, rest. to rest. Protect them, Protect them during, the during the proceedings. And we ask, and we ask for everything, for everything to, go well. to go well. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you, Jesus for, the life for the life of Johnny Ashipala. We lift him up to you, Lord. We lift him up to you, Lord. We ask you, we ask you to bring comfort to, bring comfort to the Ashipala family. To the Ashipala family. Embrace them, Lord. Embrace them, Lord. In your loving arms. In your loving arms. While they are grieving. While they are grieving. The loss of their loved one. The loss of their loved one. Be with them, Lord. Be with them, Lord. In their sorrow. In their sorrow. Uphold them. With your, with your strength and through the love, through the love shown, by friends and family, shown by friends and family may they know, may they, know they, are they are not alone the lord, the lord is close to the brokenhearted, is it close to the brokenhearted? he heals, he heals the, brokenhearted the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds, up their wounds. Thank, you, jesus. thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus, thank you, jesus. Thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You may now sing from Ehangano 295. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us read together.
from Romans chapter 8, verse 35 up to 9. The letter or the epistle of Paul to the Romans chapter 8, verse 35 up to 39. It read as follows in the name of the Lord. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present or the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's why the word of God, let us pray. God of hope, we come to you in grief and confusion of heart. Help us to find peace in the knowledge of your loving mercy to all your children and give us light to guide us out of our darkness into the assurances of your love. Thank you for the life of Johannes Ashipala and all the years we shared with him. We lift him to you today in honor of the good we saw in him and the love we felt from him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Dear brothers and sisters in our Lord Jesus Christ, the widow Memehilma, the siblings, the children, and the entire congregation of our Lord Jesus Christ, the sudden death of our brother and father, John, has once again brought us face to face with the reality of the shortness of our days here on earth. While we were, all of us, including that John making plans for the festive season, and looking forward to celebrate Christmas with our loved ones, it never crossed our minds that a day journey, death will be the center of our preparations during this festive season. Planning his memorial services and funeral services and not the Christmas festival, it never crossed our minds. Time and again, death shakes us and places the reality before our eyes that we don't have a permanent home here on earth. Death reminds us that sooner or later we will be carried away from the land of the living to our final resting places. In the psalm we read, at the beginning of our service, the writer of Psalm 90 tells us that we are nothing because our life here on earth is compared to grass that comes up in the morning and in the evening it dried up and is blown away by the wind. Again, our life is compared to a shadow that is there one moment and the next moment it's nowhere to be seen. When 
this comes to pass, what remains behind is memories and sorrow in the minds and hearts of the loved ones we leave behind. The question tonight is, what about my life? What about our lives? How will this day, the day of death, finds me? How will death find me when my name is suddenly called? Dear people of God, let us live every day for the Lord. Let us feed ourselves with the word of God, not only at memorial services and funeral services, not only when we are sick and dying, but every day let the word of God be the light to your feet and the lamb on your path. Death always finds us during our normal routines. It finds us on our usual routes, doing what we always do. It finds us on familiar path. There we come face to face with death. We don't need to verge off our path in order to meet death. It will find us on our daily routes. In the text we read, the Apostle Paul confronted by many life-threatening challenges or situations in his life, wrote these beautiful words we just read. Who then can separate us from the love of Christ? Take note that Paul is not saying that because we belong to God and we worship Him regularly, accident, trials, and challenges that will make us feel separated from God will not come our way. The truth that we have to know is that while we are in this life, there will always be afflictions visiting us all the time. We will go through all kinds of hardships, including losing our loved ones, when we least expect it. And when we go through these hardships and afflictions, dear brothers and sisters, to many it feels as if God has left them and we are on our own, far away from his love and care and protection. But the greatest consolation is that we know the truth and we know that that is not the case. Pain and tears cannot separate us from the love of God and from Christ, who promised to be with us all the day up to the end of times. The Apostle Paul names a list of potential obstacles that overwhelm us. And he says, is it trouble or hardship? Is it persecution or hunger or poverty or danger? Or is it death itself that will be able to separate us from the love of Christ? When those who don't have a strong faith in Jesus Christ go through these trials and afflictions, they start doubting, they start losing hope, and they start looking for answers in things rather than focusing their eyes on the cross of Jesus Christ. Dear family and friends, can the death of your beloved husband Mehilma, of your beloved brother and friend, separate you from the love of Christ? Paul gives us an answer in verse 37 and he says, No, in all these things 
we have a complete victory through him who loved us. Paul says, even if we have to pass through difficult times of what he has listed as trials and afflictions that will shook our faith and dim our hope, the love of God is unending. The love of God is not seasonal. It does not depend on whether the sky is overcast with dark clouds or it's a clear blue sky. The love of Christ is always there. And in all these struggles and challenges, it will give us complete victory. But how is victory possible in the face of death? How can a grieving family be more than conquerors in the affliction? It is only through him who loved us so much that he laid down his life for us. Our victory is tied or connected to Christ's victory. Therefore, death can no longer have power over us because our Lord has conquered death and gave a promise of eternal life, provided that we believe and accept him as Lord and Savior. That uh, Johnny went through many challenges. The very same Paul mentioned in this passage. He grappled with trouble. He faced problems of similar intensity. He left this country hoping to escape persecution at the hands of an oppressive regime. He went into exile to fight for freedom. In exile, he also had to endure great physical and emotional pain. He went through tribulations, distress, and persecution. He went in exile and he faced death. But he never allowed whatever happened to him, the challenges and the pain he endured to separate him from the love of Christ. Death did not find him in exile. God spared him and his grace, he returned home and his remains will be buried tomorrow in his motherland. But as a man of peace, that the John or Johnny accepted what happened to him and moved on. He never held grudges against anyone. Even in his business life, we used to, to spend long hours together. He will come here and he will be telling stories of the liberation struggle, what he endured in exile. It is true what was mentioned here, that he was a broken man, but I think he had found peace. That is why he never or grandeurs against anyone. God gave him the strength to continue. He, as a man of peace, he accepted what happened and moved on. Even when he found difficulties and had wins in fulfilling his dream with his business partners, it was his dream. It actually became a repetition. He had so much uh, 
He had so much hope that uh, they would be able to put up a solar plant that will supply electricity to this whole country and beyond. He was always a man who wanted to make a positive change in the lives of many people, a contribution in the lives of others, and contributing towards a greater Namibia. It is true what was mentioned here, that in all these doings, he will always repeat, I'm not doing this for myself. This is not for me. As if he knew that he will depart before everything comes to fruition. But many never saw that or shared his dream. Whenever someone comes up with an idea, we tend to think that it is for his or her own benefit. We think so because most of us are very greedy and we only think about ourselves. John was not like that, but was a humble, friendly person who always put others ahead of him. He was always patient. The last time we met on Wednesday, before the Friday he died, he, he looked forward. He said maybe the new year will get this project off the ground. I think it's now left to, the, to his partners, to his business partners, to move forward and to fulfill or to bring, the, to bring John's dream to fruition. May the Lord show mercy upon his soul. In the concluding verses of this passage, Paul reiterates his strong belief when he says, I am certain, I am convinced that nothing can separate us from his love, neither death nor life. The Lord wants to encourage us who are left behind, who don't know how much time we have, that we should not fear death, because even in death, death itself cannot separate us from God. For the believing one, it is the way that carries us over to the other side. That a journey came into our lives at different intervals and touched all of us, those who are here and those that are watching, all of us in a different and unique way. He is gone physically. His soft and humble words has been silenced, but he will continue to live in our thoughts and dreams till we join him when our time here is also complete. Yes, till we meet him again on the glorious day of resurrection, not with tears of sorrow, but with tears of joy. We give thanks to the Lord for everything he has given us through his servant, whom he has released from fear, pain, and from death itself. Dear grieving family, you have lost a husband, Mahima. The siblings have lost a brother. The children have lost their father. But you will never be separated from the love of God. This is the promise God gives you. This is the promise God wants to console you with tonight. He is still your God. He is still your Father. Just like the Apostle Paul, our brother John was confident about internal victory. That is why he overcomes all deadly situation, both at home and in exile. Do not allow his death to tear you from God's love. Do not allow his death 
to cheer you from the victory of Christ in which he believed wholeheartedly. But fix your eyes firmly on our Lord Jesus and he will console you. Meme Hilma, it never crossed your mind that the journey will be moving to another home and leave you behind so soon. What can we say to you tonight? It is only you who knows the pain that is deep inside your heart. It is only those who have gone through this experience who knows how it feels to lose a spouse. Yes, you remain faithful and truthful and committed to the vows you took. You had your good days and your bad days and you shared laughter and tears, joy and pain together. Your husband leaves you with memories that you will treasure forever. He will appear in your dreams just for you to wake up to the reality that it was only a dream and he is gone forever. You will hear familiar voices, a familiar voice. You will see resemblance in people you will cross on the streets. But you will always rebuke yourself by saying, I know it's not him. I know it's not the words of John. He is gone. As you start this new chapter in your life without your husband, may Hilma remain faithful to our Heavenly Father, who once gave and who has taken away your husband. Seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit as you will be on your own to raise your children. Walk every step with our Lord Jesus Christ because on your own you will never manage. Remain faithful to the Lord. We are here tonight to console you, but as the days comes and goes, you will be on your own. But with Christ on your side, you will be able to overcome. To my dear brothers and sisters, you have lost a father, someone you always look up to, someone whom you always saw as Superman. As you continue on your journey without him, there is a greater father, the father of the fatherless, who will never forsake nor leave you. Trust him and lean on him more closely, and he will wipe away every tear from your eyes. If you seek him, he will be closer to you. Your father, John Achipala, was a regular worshiper in this house. And in most of the speeches that were given here this evening, in, every, in almost every speech that was given here, there was reference to his faith, how he walked with the Lord. Follow in his footsteps by saving the Lord just as your father did in this life. In conclusion, we who had the privilege of knowing and walking with Dade Johnny have been blessed by his life. We have learned a lot from him, especially to forgive and to move on, to accept every person as a brother or sister, and to treat all people with respect, irrespective of their tribal or racial background. You couldn't place him in a tribal box, not John. One Namibia, one Asian was not only a slogan to him, but he lived that. Let us console ourselves, knowing well that if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or we die, we belong to the Lord. May the peace of God console you and wipe away every tear from your eye. Amen.
We thank you for the sermon, uh, Pastor. And I now have the pleasure of calling Mr. Zepi Kangwandi to give us the a vote of thanks and announcements. Mr. Kangwandi, please. Thank you, directors of these proceedings. <clears throat> On behalf of Meme Hilma and the entire Ashipala family, we would like first and foremost to thank our Lord for guidance since the 18th of December for his protection and for the guidance. I can see the Lord even stimulate nature so that you can cool down the heat of the summer so that you can really proceed with this today and the funeral tomorrow. It was not easy to prepare, to plan, to move around, to ask for assistance during the festive season, but even now, the undertaker here is telling me that everything is moving very well. So, we have to thank the Lord for this support and for his guidance. The family wants to thank all and everybody, the friends, the comrades, the relatives, who have supported us. Some of them, they have supported us while they are far away. Because of the pandemic, they could not join us. But again, we can feel and we felt and we are feeling their support. We want to thank Reverend, the head of this congregation, with your entire leadership and the staff for efficiency, promptness, and willingness to help us during this difficult time. The family is thanking all the companions who are busy with the arrangements at home, at the cemetery, and everywhere else where we are making arrangements for Tate Johnny's funeral. We also want to thank those who cannot join us, who were connected to Tate Johnny through music, as we know that he was an avid love of music, through traveling. Tate Johnny was a, a traveler. I remember one day he went to West Africa and to Europe to solve problems that could have been solved with the email because he just wanted to travel. He was a traveler both domestic and he also loved to fly and to travel around the world. There are people who were connected to Tate Johnny and to the family through jokes, through cooking. You have listened here that he was a very good chef and he liked to bring people together and cook for them. These people, some of them, they cannot be here today and they are part of the people that we, we want to thank for their support and for their encouragement, for their comfort and consol consolations. We want to thank those who are connected to Tate Johnny through project and business ventures. Tate Johnny was a man who loved very, very, very ambitious projects. When I used to work for the port, he used to visit me a lot with projects that are very big. Sometimes he used to bring partners and his colleagues. And when I escort them out of my office, I want to whisper in his ears that my brother, some of these projects are too big. He say, Sebi, it's possible. Yes, it is possible. And I know that today there are people who wanted to be here, people who shared his vision his dreams, his goals, and his plans, 
but they cannot be here because of the pandemic. We also want to, to thank everybody who was connected to Tate Johnny through his strong disciplinary mannerism. Tate Johnny uh, was a very peaceful person until he decided to shake the tree. Then he became really disciplinary and he started disciplining the situation. So I'm sure the younger relatives and some niece and cousins, they know what I'm talking about. They, you are going to miss him and there are people who are still missing him and they wanted, us to, they wanted them to be here with us, but they cannot be with us but they also have made some very good contribution and sent very supporting spiritual and otherwise uh, messages and uh, uh, assistance. We want to thank all the speakers for availing themselves to come here and celebrate the life of Tate Johnny. Thank you very much. And now to move on to announcement. Tomorrow we will start at 7 o'clock at Tate Johnny's house and we proceed to the Pionis Park Cemetery. And today, when you leave here, although we know that the pandemic does not allow us to gather too many people at the same time, you are welcome to join the family at Tate Johnny's house. And we know that there is a curfew and we know that we have to observe the social distance. We thank you very much. And again, I also want to thank everybody for the readiness and the busyness that we put you through so that we can have this memorial service. We will continue until we lay his body tomorrow. And we continue to ask for the Lord's support now, this evening, tomorrow, and into the future. Can we please sing Mehangano 507? of very safe five and six. Thank you very much. As we are welcoming Reverend Azuara to give us blessing and benediction, let us sing him 432 in Angano. 432.
Let us pray. O oh God of all grace, you send your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to redeem and bring us the promise of eternal life. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live as well, and that neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Heavenly Father, your days are without end, and your mercies cannot be counted. Make us aware of the shortness and uncertainty of human life, and let your Holy Spirit lead us in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives, so that we, when we have faithfully served you during our earthly life, we may be joined with the faithful that has gone before us. Heavenly Father, incline your ear to our prayer, wherein we humbly pray you, Father, to show mercy to your servant John, who has finished his journey on earth. We give you thanks for the testimony of his humble and peaceful life. We are happy and consoled that you have released him from suffering and pain. Indeed, he has fought the good fight, finished the race, and kept the faith. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being his Lord and Savior. And now, as you have promised, receive him in the glory of your Father, in the heavenly mansion, where there are places prepared for us. Thank you, Father, that you are our rock and fortress, and we can always find refuge in you. You have said that whoever follows you will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. As this family feels the darkness of grief and sorrow at this time, shine your light on their lives. Remind them that their hope is found in you. May your love surround the bereaved family, especially the wife, children, and siblings of John. May your spirit guide them May your peace calm their troubled hearts through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, This is what the Lord says. He who created you, he who formed you, Johannes Usiku Ashipala, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Amen. Receive now the benediction of the Lord and go in peace. The Lord will bless you and keep you. The Lord will make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord will look upon you with mercy, favor, and love and give to you his peace. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. As we are offering our offerings, 
Let's sing Hymn 507. Let's repeat that in its entirety from Ehangano. Hymn 507. As we start with the offerings. <laughs> 